Hey guys, in this video, I'll be talking to you about a responsive CSS. If we go to Dribble, similar to the last example that I was showing you, now if I let's say open up the responsive view, and you can obviously open up the responsive view by clicking this button and you can easily resize the content. So you can see that uh, initially, if I really make it make it wide enough, um, we had multiple columns. So we had three columns and then if I ma make it even wider, we had four columns and then smaller three, then two, then one. We also obviously have the header changing as well. So, so that's like responsive view. And uh, basically it means that you show different things or you show a different sort of a hierarchy or visuals when a person, depending on the, depending on the screen size basically. So how do we actually accomplish that? So let's just go to our previous example of the grid. Imagine if we wanted to show three elements by default, but let's say if it went smaller than, let's say uh, for tablets, we wanna show two, and for mobile devices, we just wanna show one item per row. How do we actually accomplish that? Well, it's really easy to begin with. You can just do an at media sign, and then you can say max minus width, and then you can define the width. For example, I can say if the screen is lower than, this max width means that it's lower than 1024, then I can write what to do here. For example, if I just say body, display none. I'm, I'm basically saying if uh, the screen is lower than 1024 pixels, just make it, just hide the body. So if I, let's say, um, just expand it, go to the responsive view and uh, you can already see that it's hidden, but let's just do it uh, one by, just let's just slide it and see it happening. So for example, as you can see here, like this is the width right now. And if I'm like, let's say resizing it, you can see the width changing. And as soon as it gets below 1024, it disappears. So similarly, I can apply different CSS styles based on the screen size that I want to. So let's say, I just wanna go back here. I just wanna delete this. Uh, and obviously good thing about like the, the auto reloading that it's working automatically. But if I go here, I can basically say, let me just, yeah, let me just move um, this elements tab at the bottom. And I wanna say, I just wanna copy this image grid again. And I wanna say on the image grid, if for example, the screen size is lower than 1024 pixels, instead of let's say three columns, just have it, just have two columns. And similarly, I wanna say if it goes even below, let's say to 640 pixels, I wanna have a single column or something along those lines. So as you can see now, if it's, if it's above 1024 pixels, it shows three. If we reduce the size below 1024, it says two, it shows two. And then if we reduce it even further to let's say uh, 640 pixels, it currently just shows yeah, it, it, it currently just shows like, for some reason, it still shows the two. So this isn't necessarily being respected. And why is that? Well, one of the reasons for that is there's a tag, a meta tag that actually detects browser sizes and device sizes. So right now, for example, if I go, even if I, let's say, just, just expand it, I say I want to go to an iPhone, the Pixel 2. I can see that on Pixel 2, it's still 2. I can say iPhone X, it's still whatever. And you can also see that the that everything is being squished. Like it's it's just being really zoomed out for some reason. Like why are these buttons so small? These seems like exception. These seem exceptionally small. So why is that? Well, one reason, one major reason, or the actual reason for that is that we haven't set a meta tag to tell the browser that this is going to be a responsive site and you need to res you need to organize yourself or you need to be open to any css changes and uh, again organize the layout accordingly based on the device width so what we want to do here is we want to say meta we want to open a meta tag and we want to game it and um, give it a name of viewport and then you want to say, and you don't have to remember this, you can, you can obviously find it quite easily on the internet, or you can just again copy this as well. And you can say content. So the content is going to be width sensitive, and it's going to take the device width. Device width. And that should do the trick, but I, you, you can also apply an initial scale of one. 
So you're saying basically organize the content based on the device width and the initial scale of the content is gonna be one. Now I save it, I refresh it, and as you can see, every, everything works fine and dandy. I can go back to the responsive view and I'm expanding it. As soon as it goes below 640, it changes it into one. And I can do tons of these CSS changes here. For example, for the nav, I have the padding 50 pixels. I wanna say, hey, on mobile, I don't really want that large of a padding. I just wanted, let's say, 20 pixels or something along those lines. So I just do 20 pixels, I save it, and as you can see, uh, the padding re uh, decreases based on the screen size. So yeah, that's just a quick tutorial on how to actually work with media queries. This is what, this is what we refer as media queries. Obviously, there are different rules for them. Uh, you can also check by the the pixel ratio, the density. You can also have minimum width. So if I just go here and I say minimum width and minimum width, what this basically means is if the screen size is larger than 640, do this. If the screen size is larger than 1024, do this. So if we go towards, if we take an approach like this, what we want to do is we want to reverse everything and you want to say, this is going to be this is going to be a mobile first approach if we use minimum width uh, and if we use maximum width it could it it would be like a desktop first approach so if and ideally i considering the usage of mobile devices i would say uh, try to just go with minimum width and try to design for mobile devices first so if this is the case i want to say for mobile devices it's going to have a single column uh, for starters after it reaches above 640 pixels, I want to have, let's say, uh, two columns. And when it goes beyond 1024, I want to I have three columns. And let's just have a look. It should work pretty much the same. I go to 640, it goes to two columns, and I go even beyond, and it goes to uh, three columns. Now, it, it isn't really going to three columns, so I'm just going to have a look at it. And the reason for that is specificity. So the, so the thing is that this is taking precedence over this particular rule and the reason for that is that anything written at the end of this, at, um, anything written below in the file takes precedence over something written above it. So what I have to do basically, I just have to cut this and just paste it below and if I refresh it, it works. So these are things that you also wanna know. For example, if I just wanna give an example of that quickly as well, body, I say body is gonna be display none. So it's obviously gonna hide the body. But if I give the same body tag uh, a display block, let's say, and I, ref and I just save it, it's gonna, it's gonna show it because the same, the, these have the same specificity. I'm just targeting the body tag, I'm targeting it here as well. But the element, but the, but the thing that's written below is going to take precedence over the over the item above. There are other ways in which you can play around with specificity. For example, I can say I want to target the the body tag which exists inside the HTML. Now this is being more specific than this one. So if I save, you can see that despite this being written afterwards, this is taking more importance because it is just being very specific. It's just saying, hey. I want to target the body that exists within the HTML. And you can see here, the selector specificity is two, and here the selector specificity is one. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. In the next video, I'll, uh, instead of actually continuing to work with CSS, I'm gonna share an approach that's gonna re really easily allow you to get a hang of CSS without necessarily remembering all of these properties. And it's also gonna really increase the speed at which you design websites so i really hope you guys stick to uh, come to the next video because it's really going to be interesting